All right. Today on the show, we have Michael Hellickson from clubwealth.com. Let me tell you about Michael. Now, Michael has been selling real estate for over 20 years, listing and selling over 100 homes per month and carrying over 750 active and pending listings at one point. He began his real estate career in 1991, has been among the top 1% of all agents nationally before he even this is incredible, before he even graduated high school. At the pinnacle of his sales career, Michael and his team were literally number one nationwide out of over 1 million real estate agents and teams. In addition to posting big numbers in retail and REO, Michael is considered uh, by most to be the number one short sale expert in the world. I'm gonna say that again. He is considered to be the number one short sale expert in the world. During his career, uh, Michael has, has spoken to thousands upon thousands of agents and organizations nationwide Nationwide. He's been featured on several national television and radio programs, including Glenn Beck, CNBC, Dave Ramsey, Fox Business Network, among many other local and regional programs. He is also the founder and president of Club Wealth Coaching and Consulting. Unique in the industry, every Club Wealth coach has sold more real estate than the agents or brokers they coach. And that is an amazing statistic. Every single one of their coaches has sold more than the people that they coach themselves. Um, and I want I want everybody to go check out clubwealth.com. Uh, I, I'm, I love Club Wealth. I'm a huge fan and I want all of our listeners to, of course, uh, get, go check it out, see what the coaches offer. Um, but Michael, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Oh my gosh, what a great introduction. Thank you so much for that. Uh, you know, when you said 1991, I just cringed. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm old. <laughs> it, just, it, it just dawned on me, I'm like 1991, there's probably people watching this that weren't even born then. <laughs> You know, it's funny, like, I, I agree. I'm, I just turned 44, which is not, you know, old, old, but I'm now it's like, okay, now I actually have to exercise five days a week. Like in the past, right. I could get away with maybe one day a week, maybe even skipping a week. Now it's every meal I eat has to, I have to watch what I eat. I have to exercise because everything counts now. It's, you know, my body is not responding the way it used to. I know, right? Oh my gosh. When we get injured, we uh, feel it for a lot longer. <laughs> so... Well, I would love to tell our listeners, you know, being you have such an impressive and storied background in real estate, I would really love to go all the way back to the beginning um, and, and talk more about how you got started, why you got started, how you grew your business, and then eventually how you created Club Wealth. And, and sure. talk, I want to talk about that. So go ahead. Well, so I started off, you know, when I was a kid, I, I thought about, you know, I was always a pretty driven kid, you know, I wanted to make money and uh, wanted to figure out not just how to make money, but I wanted to figure out how to, how to really build wealth. You know, how, how do I, how do I get to a point where I can have, you know, what wealth that allows me to not have to work, but continue to have a great life. And, uh, and I, and I thought to myself, well, where do people make and, and hold their wealth? And it's real estate, right? Well, then I thought about, well, what, how do I get there? If I want to buy real estate, I got to make some money, right? I'm going to have to sure. get some money rolling in. And so what careers are going to offer me the most money? And, 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 I, and this is a kid, you got to remember here, I'm, you know, 17 years old at the time. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I don't want to go to college. That doesn't sound like fun. You know, go to school and, you know, go to all these years of school, come out with hundreds, if not, you know, millions yeah. of dollars in debt. You know, like, I mean, you know, or not millions, but you know, I, I know, you know, professional, you know, like dentists and doctors, some of these guys have 750,000, a million dollars in debt. Yeah. And I just thought that just doesn't make any sense to me. And then you get out of school at, you know, 38 years old and finally get to start your career. I said, no, right. I'm not idea. Exactly. So sales made sense. I thought, well, heck, okay. So a lot of people make great money in sales. So I thought, well, why don't I go into real estate sales? It's a high ticket item and it's related to the investing that I want to do. And so why not do that? And well, I guess it worked. Uh, so when I was in high school, my, my junior year of high school, I got, I, I took as many credits as I could, uh, went to summer school between my junior and senior year so that I could get all my credits done. So all I had to do was go to school that first semester senior year so that I could get my real estate license while I was in high school. Wow. Uh, and so, right. So I turned 18 in January and by March, I was the top listing agent in my office. Um, and, and, and let me tell you, at 17, as, well, I was 18 by this point. So I turned 18 in January. How did you get listings? I'm sorry, not by March. I'm sorry. It was by March. I had my license. So it was by graduation. I was the top agent in my office. But, but even so, how does an 18 year old grow a real estate practice? I, I mean, I was working for minimum wage in a bar at 18. Right. Well, yeah. but here's the thing. Like I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to, right? right. I didn't know that that wasn't normal. 
right. and man, you want to talk about a bunch of pissed off middle-aged real estate agents. Oh my gosh. You should have seen those agents in my office. Uh, you know, they, they just didn't, they didn't think it was funny that, that an 18 year old kid was not only getting more listings than them, but I was taking listings regularly at eight and 10% commission, which wasn't normal back then. Seven was pretty normal back then. And I was getting them at eight and 10% on houses, not land, just houses. And these agents were getting pissed. They're like, well, why should you get to charge eight or 10%? Everybody else charged seven. Well, I just asked them if they'd pay me that. And they said, yes. I mean, why, why not? I mean, why shouldn't I charge that? Right. Uh, and, and so I had a structured, you know, I had a, I had a, uh, tiered program where, you know, they could go seven, eight or 10%. And I had, I had people choose different levels and I gave them different levels of service and different levels of, of, of things that I would do for them at, uh, for a different price. And, and it was up to them and, and it worked. And then before long, I started charging uh, a transaction fee, started charging a $695 transaction fee. And I started getting that too. And, and before long, I was getting it on all my listings. And, and uh, so my first year, I worked 100 hour weeks. And I'm telling wow. you, it was killer. I was literally sleeping at the office three nights a week. I was curled up under my desk. This was before I worked from home. And uh, it was terrible. It was terrible. But I was not going to fail. Right. And uh, I, my parents, bless their hearts, meant, they meant well. They're good parents. Um, they just, th as hard as I was working, and even though I was the top agent in my office, which sounds great, but all it meant was I was less broke than the other agents. <laughs> sure. So, I mean, this is, this is an industry where a million dollar producer means, you know, I'm broke. Yeah. So that yeah. said, um, you know, but we love to give ourselves awards for being broke. <laughs> sure. And so my parents were telling me, Hey man, you need to go get a job. Like this yeah. is ridiculous. You need to start making some money. Uh, so, and you should probably go just to work for McDonald's because you probably make more than what you're doing right now. And the scary thing is that they were right. If I would have gone to work for McDonald's, I would have made more money probably than I was making uh, when it all shook out. Um, but I was not going to let that happen. I was not going to fail. So um, I came to a crossroads in my life. I said, all right, I, I, I want to give back. For, before I do this, I, I, I figured out I wanted to go serve a mission for the church. So I took two years off, went and served a mission for the church, came back, hired my first coach immediately when I got back. Smart. Yeah. Well, and it was, I, I don't, I mean, it turns out it was smart. I don't know if it was smart or lucky. I, I think for me, it was more luck. Uh, I, I'd like to say it was well thought out, but I just, I just needed help. Um, and, um, and so I hired Mike Ferry back then, uh, sure. man, back in the day, back, back Legend. when Mike was a young, uh, spry, 300 years old. I'm just joking. I'm <laughs> listening to this. I love you, brother. He's you're, always been an old man. His yeah, whole I, life. He's been an old man. I, I don't understand it. Like this guy's the energizer bunny on steroids, yeah. right? Uh, and look, I got a lot of respect for Mike. Mike's done more for this industry than, than, ver than most people. I mean, he's, he's, just, in, he's incredible. And he, yeah. I don't think he really gets his due quite honestly. I don't either. I, I don't either. I think I, and it's, Mike is fantastic. And so anyway, long story short, I, I worked with Mike and I, and I, I learned a couple of things. One, the, one of the thing, the one thing he taught me that was probably the most impactful was that if you don't have an assistant, you are one. Right. And so it, taught me I needed to hire an assistant and I didn't know how I was going to pay for this gal. I had a credit card and I had enough room on my credit card to hire her, but I didn't have a clue how I was going to pay her long-term, but I, I trusted my coach. He said, hire an assistant. I hired an assistant. Well, uh, her name was Tara and she came to work for me. Uh, and four years later we got married and that's when I went to work for her. Oh, uh, that's amazing. So, Right. I always tell people, any man that says he wears the pants in the family probably lies about other things too. <laughs> so, anyway, that said, uh, I also learned, he also taught me the importance of overcoming call reluctance. He taught me a lot about NLP, taught me, you know, uh, some sure. real basics that I needed to know. Um, but then I kept out, right. I got to a point in this program where I, I can only make so many calls. Right. And right. frankly, I wasn't loving making all these calls. Right. Uh, you know, I got to a point where just, you know, making cold calls just wasn't doing it for me. And that was a big a thrust of, of what Mike would say is he'd go do the hard things that other agents won't do, like calling expireds, calling FISBOs, making yeah. those, those cold calls that nobody wants to make. And if you can get yourself right. to do it, you're, you're going to have success. But it is a grind for it sure. Is. Yes, yeah. that's right. Well, and it's, well, Mike, and then you had Floyd, and you had all those sweat hogs and all these guys, right? Um, so then I hired Brian Buffini. Sure. Uh, my next coach. Totally yeah. different approach. 100%. Yeah. 
but but I didn't switch approaches. I augmented approaches, right? So sure. I took what I'd learned from Mike and I added what I was learning from Brian and I automated all of this stuff. I delegated as much as I could. Oh, first of all, I automated everything I could. Then I delegated what I couldn't automate and I went through and I just eliminated anything that was unnecessary. Right. So as I did that, we started getting pretty good. And I took my business up to another level. And then I hired a, another coach, another coach, another coach. I mean, you name them. I've probably had them as my coach. If you, if yeah. you recognize them as a big name coach, they've probably been my coach at some point. And I learned something from all of them. And I started realizing that to really run a successful business at scale, particularly you're, you can't just do one thing. You have to have all of these pieces or at least a number of these pieces in your business and they all make a difference. Um, and so I figured out what that cocktail looked like for my business. And, um, and then part of it all along the way, another thing that I did that I think really made a difference for me is I, I decided when I was in high school, I decided after about six months of these hundred hour weeks, I said, you know, this is dumb. All these people are giving me advice and, and I'm looking at these guys and, you know, and I'm doing more business than them and they're giving me advice. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, so one of our core values at Club Wealth is that if you want to climb to the top of Mount Everest, you need a guy who's been to the top of Mount Everest before. You need a Sherpa who's actually yes. done it before. Yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of times they got to know where the crevasses are. They got to know where the ladders yeah. are, where you can cross, where you can't cross. You know, like they got to know stuff or you're going to die. Right. And I don't want my business to die. And so I, I said, okay, I'm not going to learn. I'm not going to listen to anybody. I'm not going to take advice from anybody that has not made at least a hundred thousand dollars a year doing what I want to do. Sure. And then when I got to that point, I said, okay, well, that worked pretty well. Now I'm not going to take advice from anybody that makes less than 250 a year doing right. Well. And I just kept ratcheting it up. And by the time I got to a million, now it's a pretty small group back then, especially like today, a lot of agents make a million dollars a day back then wasn't so. Right. Uh, and so it became a very small group, but it served me well. Um, and so, yeah, combining that with all the coaching that I was getting and, and one other thing that I would say was a huge component. Um, well, two, one was hiring the right people um, and, and creating a culture that they wanted to be part of. Sure. And the, and the next thing was um, putting myself in a financial position. So I kept my living expenses small and I put myself in a very strong financial position so that when the market shifted, like I'll use 2007 as an example. Sure. 2007, when the market shifted, I had seven figures in the bank. Everybody else, and I was doing about four or 500 transactions a year. Uh, Which is incredible. How, how big was your team back then? 16 agents. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so it was good, but it wasn't where we could be and it wasn't where we ended up. And uh, what I did, what happened was in 2007, same thing happened in March of this year, by the way. Sure. Uh, in 2007, what everybody do? They started they started cutting off their lead sources because they couldn't, they were, they were fearful. So they started canceling their lead sources and I just started buying up all the best lead sources. You doubled down. Oh, yeah. du completely, completely. Uh, and more than doubled down, way more than doubled down. Uh, but then they also started doing it with their staff, right? So you'd have all these people that had great assistance, but now they weren't making it because they cut off their leads. Now they couldn't afford their staff. So they started right. cutting back on their staff. And oh, by the way, because they didn't have the leads, now their agents were leaving them. Sure. And so I had my pick of all the best team members. I had my pick of all the best admin team members. And I just doubled down on all of it, knowing that I'd, I, I assumed I'd probably lose money that year. Oh my gosh, we, we didn't lose money even a single month that year. We crushed it because we just brought it all in. You saw the opportunity where most people were struggling um, and, and who were exiting and, and, or cutting back because of the economy and, and where things were with the housing market. And you, it, it's, they say that within crisis, opportunity is born, right? And that's, oh, you that's just amazing. named it. You know, Shinzu, you know who Shinzu is, right? Sure. The art of war. The Shinzu quote is that, that where there's chaos, there's opportunity, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so what we did, like in March, let's go back to March of this year when COVID hit, right? Sure. Such a great example. Everybody starts freaking out. Oh my gosh, you know, the sky is falling and what are we going to do? Dude, we went out to our clients and we said, buy everything you can. You get every lead source you can. You yep. double down, you know, and they're like, but what do we do? We can't be face to face, but then do it over Zoom. You do your listing appointments over Zoom. You do buyer appointments. Over, you do yep. everything you can remotely, but you double down on those lead sources. You double down on everything. And guess what? It worked. 
over 80% of our clients have reported that they've had their best run, ever, uh, you know, uh, you know, well, the last number I have is a three month window, but that three month window, they had their best three months of any three months in their career. It's amazing. We, we have Zillow that is uh, kind enough to come on every month and share insights. Mm-hmm. And they said when COVID hit, their numbers skyrocketed like they could, they would have never predicted or seen. And they're already the number, they're already number one. And right. they said, whole, they can't, they go, you, we can't even tell you what the numbers are, but they said, it is so incredible. You wouldn't have believed it. Um, and because everybody was at home, you know, sort of looking around, looking at their four walls going, maybe this isn't good enough anymore. Maybe I need to upside or uh, upgrade. So but what's interesting, here's the thing that's really interesting about that though. You look at Zillow and realtor.com and guess what they did during that time? They cut prices. Yeah. Realtor.com is an example that 50% discount a lot of their yeah, yeah. I had one of my clients today, one of our coaches actually, a uh, super smart guy, Coach Craig Chastain, uh, said that he bought, he, he decreased his spend by 30% and increased his monthly leads coming in by 25%. Wow. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. That's great ROI. I mean, that's yeah. how you make money. That's how you run a business, right? Right. And that's what's got to happen. So agents right now would be wise to start stock, stockpiling money. And if I could give anybody advice right now, it's there's three things I would tell you. One, cut expenses. Two, stockpile cash. And three, keep your foot on the gas. You do those three things, you're going to be dialed in. Yeah, and also remembering that most agents, you know, look, they are independent contractors, they are individual business owners, and most, unless they're on a team, and they are susceptible to the same depression and, and, and challenges that the rest of the country is facing. And when the, the challenges hit and we're staying, sitting around in our house because we're ordered to do that, we are, it is very, very hard to stay focused and motivated. And I think that is where coaching really, really comes in. For somebody else to say, you know, like I hire a personal trainer and it's not because I don't know how to exercise and I don't know what to do. I hire a trainer because I am not going to exercise without a personal trainer. I am embarrassed about that. I wish that wasn't the case, but the truth is I need to pay somebody to tell me to get on the floor and do some push-ups. And you know what? It's the best money I spend because it right. gets me to do the work. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And accountability is, is a piece of coaching. You know, what's interesting though, is most coaching programs, that's the limit, right? It's that's right. just yeah. accountability. It's yeah. how many calls did you make today? How many, exactly. contacts? How many appointments yeah. did you set? Like, that's not us, right? What we do is we look at it and we say, all right, look, how's your business doing? What's working? What's not working? Where do you want to be? What are you willing to do to get there? What aren't you willing to do to get there? Okay, let's build you a roadmap on, first of all, how to fix the problems in your business today. And then this is what you need to do moving forward. And we don't just say, go hire an assistant. We'd say, okay, listen, here's what you got to do. Here's the checklist for how to hire an assistant. Here's the ads that you run. Here's yeah. where you run the ads. Here's the questions you ask in the one-on-one interview, the group interview. And here's the job description when they come out of our, here's the contract you use when you hire them. Here, you know, your coach walks you through it. We give you videos on how to do it. Your coach will even interview the last couple of people to make sure you're getting the right fit for your team. The key though is that you've got to have somebody who has been where you are and yeah. figured out how to get beyond to be Agreed. able to do that with you. They got to know how to do it. And, and it's not enough. The accountability is important. And, and boy, you want to talk about accountability. Every once in a while in, the, in our Facebook group, you'll see, we got about what, I don't know, I think at the time we're recording this, we got about uh, 35,000 people in our Facebook group. Not all of them are clients, of course, but uh, a lot of them are. But we'll, we'll go in there and I'll tell one of my coaches you know, or one of my clients, uh, you know, they'll make a commitment to me. They'll say, well, I'm going to do this. I'll say, okay, well, how committed are you to it? Oh, I'm really committed. I'm going to do it for sure. Really? No matter what? Yeah, I'm going to do it. By when? By Sunday. You'll, no matter what, you'll do it by this date. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Well, so then how much are you willing to bet that you would do that by that time? Right. Oh, I'll bet you. I'll bet you a thousand bucks. I said, look, I know you, I know what you make. Let's, let's, let's do 5,000 bucks. Right. Let's make it to where it actually would hurt. Right. Yeah. 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 So let's make it five grand. Like, oh, sure. I'll bet you five grand. No problem. Okay, great. Then here's what I want you to do. I want you to go into our Facebook group. And I want you to post and tag me in the post and say, I will do X by such and such a date, or I will authorize Club Wealth to charge my card for $5,000 or whatever the number is. I've had them as high as $10,000. Sure. Um, for by, for $10,000, we'll say, uh, if for some reason I don't do it and they can spend the money however they want. 
And then they post that and then we hold them accountable to their goal. But here's what I tell them at that point. I said, well, great. Now privately, don't post this in the group, but privately, I want to know who your favorite political candidates are and who you really don't like. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to donate to that guy. <laughs> that's exactly what we'll do. And so we'll say, if you, don't, if you absolutely hate this particular candidate, here's what we're going to yeah. do. I'm going to take the money. I'm going to donate it to that candidate in your name. I'm going to give them your contact information and cell phone number. And I'm going to say, please continue to contact me in the future because I'm super excited about your worthy cause. And I plan to contribute on an ongoing basis. I Dude, love it. Let me tell you, I've never had to take anybody's money yet. They always follow through. Sure. Every time, every yeah. time. Well, I, I think it's so important, you know, like my, so I'm a recruiter, right? So people listening, they're mostly agents. I'm a recruiter. I have a hero in this business. His name is Long Don, and, and it just so happens, and this is completely coincidental, <laughs> that Long is one of, uh, one of Michael's coaches at Club Wealth. Long is, and I'm in, I have a hundred, we have a hundred percent company. We have 700 agents. Uh, Long actually has fewer agents than us, but his agents do about 10 times the amount of production as our agents. And so Long has figured out how to do what I do much better than I can do it. And so for me, if I were to hire a coach, it would be him because he's already done what, what I've done where he's recruited hundreds and hundreds of agents. And at one point he finally said, you know, it's better to have fewer agents who do more deals. And he figured out how to do that. And so I, I'm friendly with Long. He's a wonderful guy. That's who I would hire as my coach because he's, he's the only guy I know just about that has done what I have done and then has gotten way beyond me. And so you're absolutely right about, about coaches. Most of them haven't practiced before. Most of them haven't been out in production um, and, and your coaches have. And I, I also want to say too, that I was recently, uh, it was a huge honor of mine to be able to present for Club Wealth at a recent two-day event they had earlier this, this month. And I, I really want everybody to, to go sign up at Club Wealth and, and take advantage of some of their programming, their coaching. They're incredible. I have never, I have spoken at a lot of events. I have never, and this is the truth, I've never had a more professional experience. The, the support team that you had on hand to handle hundreds and hundreds of, of attendees were incredible. And the speakers were the best I've ever seen in a, in a two-day event. It really was that amazing. So I really wanted to, number one, thank you for letting me do that, but also two, to really honor you for the, the, the community you've built and the coaching staff you've built and the, and the speakers. It, it's really remarkable. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you very much, man. You did a fantastic job. We got great feedback on your session. So thank oh, you for doing that. You know, you were talking about long. But Mike, so Long and Mike are their partners in that in RG, and uh, I'm I'm blessed to I get to be their coach. They're wonderful people. I get to yeah. work with them all the time, and uh, both of them happen to be coaches with Club Wealth. Very yeah. different personality types. Well, here's oh, what's very different. Yeah, right. But that's important because you want to have a coach who's got success, but the personality types also got to match, right? Sure. And so we've we've got what 75, 80 coaches right now. Uh, but Mike and Long are a great example. They, when we started working together, they had 77 agents in their brokerage. Every year since that year, they have recruited at least 200 agents to their brokerage. Yeah. And they have top graded like crazy. Now I'm sharing this phrase top grading because that's the secret to what you're looking to accomplish. There's two, two things. One, the broker's got to embrace teams. You got to understand the value sure. of teams. You got to embrace teams. Two, you got to understand top grading. We, talk, we call it addition through subtraction, right? So sometimes you get that knucklehead in your company that's just a problem, right? They're, they're, yeah. they're drama, they're chaos, they're, 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 they're a cancer. Yeah. You got to cut them out and you right. got to do it quickly. And when you do, the good ones are happy that you did. You'll lose a couple of others, but those are probably also people that aren't a great fit for you and that's okay. Um, so you got to be willing to let go of some people that aren't the right fit. Uh, but when you do that, and, you, and I'm sure you're doing that already in your business, I'm sharing this because I want everybody to hear this, that it's too often, you, well, let's back up. You have to be willing to let go of the top producer in your company if they're a cancer. Or right. if you're an agent, you have to be willing to let go of that, that listing that isn't going to budge on price and is wildly uh, you know, off their mark about what their home is worth. You have to be willing to walk away from that because you're going to lose it anyway. So I'll be honest with you. I actually, <laughs> you're going to hate me. I don't know. You might hate me for this or not. I'd keep that listing all okay. day long, all day long. And I'll tell you why. So I, when I had 750 listings, I guarantee we had 150 of those that were never going to sell. No way. Okay. Okay. But guess how many sign calls I got on those listings? There you go. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We made so much money on the sign calls from those. And we were very upfront and honest with those people about, Hey, look, this is where we think it should be priced. We'll do it at your price, 
We'll market it just like we do everything else. We'll put all the time, effort, energy, and attention into it, and we'll make money on it. But I want to know if you want to make money on it, we need it to be priced right. But you choose. What would you like to do? And if they say, well, I want to price my $400,000 house at $750,000, I say, fantastic, sign here. We get it listed. And man, I'm getting one to two sign calls per week per listing. You add that up. When I had 750 listings, we were literally getting 6,352 sign calls a month. Wow. Um, but that's also, that's also assuming you have a structure in place and you did where you yeah. could take those inbound calls and realize the value of those calls. Most yeah. agents haven't figured that out. They just look and they go, oh, I'm getting these calls. These people I want, they're, they're not going to buy this overpriced property. Yeah. And they don't realize each one of those phone calls is an opportunity to create another client relationship. So you're absolutely <laughs> right. Well, you, you, you nailed the DJ. It's just like with, with an open house, right? when someone comes to an open house, I don't care if they buy that house. They're never, yeah, most of them are never going to buy that house. Yeah. Right, just buy from me. I don't mm -hmm. care what you buy. My job is to help you get what you want. I, and, right. I, and I don't care what that is. As long as you're happy with it, I don't have to like the house. It doesn't right. have to be my listing. Let me just sell you what you want and we'll both be happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, I know you have to run right now because you, you have a crazy busy day. So I want to make sure that all of give us the quick pitch on Club Wealth. What is Club Wealth and why should our listeners be paying attention to it? Um, Club Wealth is the number one coaching company in the team and brokerage space. Uh, so we, and we do coach brand new agents all the way on up to the top agents in the country. Um, we, and we should uh, mention, by the way, your top tier for, yeah. uh, for, to qualify, to be, have a top tier coach. Is it, is it $2 million? And what, what's, uh, I'm just curious, you, you guys, you guys coach the very, yeah. very top, uh, so our but top all the way tier is tier seven. And if you, and to qualify for tier seven, you have to close over a thousand transactions a year. That's amazing. Uh, so yeah. And so, or on the brokerage side, you have to have over a thousand agents in your brokerage. Sure. Uh, and so. And we have, I mean, well, like Mike and Long, you know, last year they closed, I think it was 4,200 transactions last year, 3,300 the year before. Um, yeah. And so there, you know, there are, we have coaches that are really good. First of all, they're the kind of people you want your kids around. Second of all, they're ballers. And no matter where you are, if you're, if you're a new agent doing zero to 20, or just an agent doing zero to 25 transactions a year, your coach is doing 25 to 75 transactions a year. If you're doing 25 to 75, your coach is doing 75 to 150. And, and that's important because they're not yeah. so far away from you. They're that's right. just slightly a bit above yep. what you're doing. So they, they, they were just recently there and they yep. know that transition. And it's not so far in the past where they're like, I kind of forget what it was like back then. They have just lived through it. That's right. Like if you're doing zero to 25 transactions, you don't want me or Mike or Long coaching you. We're too far removed, right? Yeah. But if you can, if we can get and put you with Darcy or any one of our other bunch of coaches that coach tier one, they know exactly how to get you from where you're at to that next right. level. Right now, it's fresh in their mind, and they and they they just went through it personally. Right. Uh, so yes, it makes a huge difference. Um, we've got group coaching programs as well for uh, you know specifically designed for people doing zero to fifteen transactions a year. Um, but at the end of the day. You know, we just, I would say we, we don't, we don't hard sell people. I, here's what I would suggest. We, there's, there's two ways you could, well, there's three, three things you could do. If you want to engage with us, learn more about us, or just get free value out of us. There's three things you could do. Number one, you can go to our website and you can take advantage of the free blog posts. There's lots of great blog. We give away stuff for free that most people sell for a lot of money. Uh, and it's great information. Like if you want to, if you want our 31 of our top lead sources, you can get that on our website. So you go to clubwealth.com forward slash leads. We'll give you 31 of our top 109 lead sources for free. We don't care. Here it is. We'll just give it to you. And we'll walk you, we'll give you a video that walks you through how to use them and all that stuff. Uh, next thing is you can go to our Facebook group. It's the, if you go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash club wealth, or just search for the club wealth real yeah. estate agent. National pops Bank. right up. Yep. Pops right up. The third thing and we'll do this once a year. So we offer this to agents once a year. You, uh, we'll do a free coaching call with you with one of our coaches. It's called a strategy session. It's 55 minutes. So regardless of what, if you're doing 400 deals a year, we'll put you on a call with somebody who's doing 800 deals a year. But we'll make sure that the person that does your strategy session is producing at a way higher level than you are. And they will literally spend an hour on the phone picking apart your business and giving you some ideas on what you can do to take it to the next level with no sales pitch. If you, in fact, if you wanted to sign up for coaching, you'd have to ask them to tell you about it. Uh, but you can just once a year, we just, so we do about 500 of these calls a month. 
um, the strategy wow. session. I know, right? It's, it's a lot <laughs> and we're about yeah. to double it. We're actually working on taking it to a thousand. Um, but again, you can have that for free once a year. And I would take, I would say, do it. It's you got nothing to lose. Jesse Zagorski, I think, did you know, Jesse, he was the MC. I do. Yeah. So Jesse tells people all the time, he says, when he did his strategy session, he got one idea, one nugget that literally that year, do you remember what he said? No. Made him $80,000 that year. <laughs> one idea that he got yeah. on that. Strategy. In a free session. In a free session. Yeah. Yeah. So. Boy, I, I I would love to I would love to get one idea that made me eighty thousand in a free session. I mean, but that but that's it. It's always one idea, right? It's that's yes. the beauty of coaching is that it's one thing that if you can take away one thing from a coaching session that you can actually go implement same yeah. day or yep. or in next day. Boy, yep. that's power. Uh, you know, there's a million great ideas, but if you can just hear one that you can you know yep. move into motion. Um, and that's all. And then just discipline, just put the blinders on and do the work every single day. And, and I'm a huge fan of club wealth. Um, I, I, I love all, all the coaches I've met there are incredible. They're amazing. I don't endorse or support anybody. This is the only thing that I, I endorse about two or three other things. This is one of them. And so anyone who is interested, please, please, please go to clubwealth.com. You'll see how professional their, their services, their offerings, their coaching is. I'm a big, big fan. Um, no, we do not get a commission if you join up with them. That is how big of a fan we are of them. Um, and, and we're honored to have Michael on the show. And he's got to run to another uh, probably coaching call himself. So I'm going to let Michael go. Um, but um, I want all of us to go, you know visit them on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash club, club wealth, or just search for them. We'll post links to it as well. Also want everybody to follow us on Facebook. So all of our listeners, if you're not already part of our Facebook community, go to keeping, I'm sorry, facebook.com forward slash keeping it real pod. And every day we post an article that we find online specifically designed to help you grow your business. And of course, all of our episodes are there as well. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm a huge fan of yours. Uh, I love being part of, uh, you know, when you guys have uh, events, I love being invited to, to speak. Um, so thank you again. Um, and really, uh, I want all of our listeners, on behalf of our listeners, I want to thank Michael and want, encourage all of them to check out Club Well. So thanks, for, nice thanks Michael. Idea. Thank you so much. Hey, we need to talk about November and have any come speak in November. So. I would love that. I would love All right. That. So for everyone listening, we want to thank our audience too. You guys are the reason we keep our business going. We keep this podcast rolling. All we ask is you do one thing. Tell a friend. Think of one other real estate professional that could benefit from having heard this great interview with Michael about the three things that agents need to do that can they can do right now to grow their business and send them a link to the show. You can easiest way to do it, send them over to our pod our, our website, which is keepingitrealpod.com, or just pull up any podcast app, search for keeping it real, we'll pop right up. But tell a friend and that'll help keep our podcast growing and uh, uh michael thank you so much it was a real pleasure i'm i'm such a fan so thank you thank you dj